We're at Milwaukee Tool Headquarters and they just dropped three new tools on us. Spoiler alert, they really suck. We're gonna be introducing a series of wet dry vacuums. Uh, we're gonna be launching an M18 Fuel six gallon wet dry vacuum. We're also gonna be launching an M18 Fuel nine gallon dual battery wet dry vacuum. And then lastly, an M18 Fuel 12 gallon dual battery vacuum to kind of complete the system. The demonstration I'm going to show here is gonna have our six gallon single battery product. And this is going to compete up against the three and a half peak horsepower product um, that's on the left. And then secondly after this, we're gonna walk through our dual battery nine gallon product and how that performs up against that four and a quarter horsepower product. So first and foremost, you have flow rate, airflow, CFM, right? The ability to move that air. But I also want you to pay attention to how much power is being used by each of these products. One of the other things is how quiet this product is. You're able to really talk over it. You're really able to carry on a conversation. So now we're gonna demonstrate our two battery product uh, up against this competitor. So we're getting over 100 GSM, this thing actually maxes out at that line and it gets even higher than that. And again, very low noise quality versus the competition and versus that four and a quarter horsepower today. What horsepower rating is the watts? Is that a measure, a measurement we should be comparing or? It's a measurement based on what's been marketed today, if that makes sense. So it really only is in the first nanosecond of you turning on that product, and it's really not an indicative thing of performance, but it's what's been marketed for so long and what users are used to looking for in those types of products. Like, hey, I need a three and a half, I need a four and a quarter. Second thing we're gonna talk about is durability. First and foremost was hoses, and second of which is wheels, right? When a user has a hose that they're being delivered with what the competition has, has today, you got a lot of kinks, you got a lot of bends. If anyone used a wet dry vacuum before, you kind of know what I mean. It's a tad frustrating to have something that gets a kink, gets a bend, gets stepped on, gets crushed. I see duct tape on hoses. You see a ton of things that really happen. So you put any sort of amount of tension on this, it's gonna kink, it's gonna bend, it's gonna rip. What we're able to deliver is something that's much more robust. We have a, a two-part construction, so essentially two layers inside of here that give you the ability to really rank on this particular product, not bend, not kink. You can step on it, you can bend this thing. It's really not going to bog down, which is what the competition has been doing really for quite some time. What we're gonna to do to showcase this is a demonstration on the durability of our hose. Ben's gonna come back here and uh, drive a little, nice little torque driver for us. So you have a standard, uh, standard hose that you see on the market. On the top, you have a pro grade um, you know, product that's in the market today that is typically a derivative of a SKU, and then you have the Milwaukee version on, on the bottom. The second thing we're going to talk about um, is wheels. So this is again a picture that we've seen all too common on a job site. It's a three-legged vacuum, but when a wheel breaks, they get frustrated, they drag it around. This is pretty much the same thing across any wet dry vac brand that you see today. In comparison to really what we're doing, not only from a size perspective, but from an overall construction, length, and kind of reinforcements that we've had, given the user the ability to really not only roll obstacles, but dampen impact through treads and really giving the user a really, really good experience in this. Because once this happens, you're frustrated with it, you lose it. It's a shared use product. You know, no one's necessarily going to, you know, like enjoying, or, uh, enjoy using that product whatsoever. So what you're gonna see is this is a drop site treadmill. So it has bumps, bruises, everything that you normally see on a job site. Once it starts to get going, you'll see that after a short amount of time, the competitor really starts to bend and break and really see what shows what Tom essentially had up on the front there. So it goes away and our product is gonna be able to continue 
to survive. So this was at 50, mil 50 miles and counting. Um, at the time, it has gone way beyond that uh, at that point. So we're very confident and I think users are gonna be very pleased with the two you know, common durability points that we have solved you know, for users. Next thing we're gonna talk about uh, is versatility. What we're able to do is give the user the most versatile system by be having the ability to interchange motorheads, interchange tanks, and then interchange carts. So it gives the user the ability to really move around uh, and be versatile uh, post-purchase. So we feel like we're coming out with the best combination of six, nine, 12 gallon and feature sets from a cart perspective, uh, from a performance perspective and a capacity perspective. What you're gonna see here is we have single battery six gallon and we have a standard uh, a uh, wet dry vacuum cart. You have your dual battery nine gallon and your uh, wet dry vacuum cart. And you have that same dual battery head, 12 gallon, and you have a premium cart. We're also gonna be leveraging an AC head. So giving the user the ability to not only cut the cord with these particular products, but giving them the opportunity to really have a corded product for those situations and really give them that versatility. That way, they're not going to have to buy a separate vacuum. They can literally bolt, a, bolt this on to their entire system. Having the ability to really just take the supplier tank off, say you're downstairs doing a kitchen remodel and you have the bathroom upstairs, you have to shed the entire weight of the vacuum and really make that a smaller uh, process for yourself. But if you wanted essentially additional performance, you could do that by having by, by swapping out the heads because we have the same interface essentially between all of them. So if I wanted to take this two battery head and put it on this six gallon product, you know, I could do that. Take the example where I want to up my size and capacity and give myself more capacity within that same footprint. You know, now in that example, I have a larger job site and I can do that. I wanted to change the base to smaller to bigger, right? I can do that going from the premium cart, I can go all the way over to the standard cart here. Second to last stop here is talking about runtime. So to talk about runtime specifically, we do that, you know, we didn't want to compromise system based at all. So I think the unique thing about really all this is you're not necessarily going to get any difference in performance from 5.0 to 8.0 to 12.0. Uh, but we know to give the user the best experience from a runtime perspective, we did optimize these for high output 8.0 and 12.0. So that gives you the user the opportunity to really deliver really that all day, all day runtime, get you to lunch, move on, right? On our six gallon product, on our HT 12 battery, on our max runtime mode, you're gonna be able to get over 45 minutes, 47 specifically. And I think one thing I wanna talk about here is what this actually means. This is continuous cleaning time. That is us putting the hose on the ground and not essentially cleaning up anything. And that's actually the most power draw type of application you can do in vacuum. So this is continuous cleaning time, just like that. So when we think about how that looks like from a debris perspective, we equated it to square footage. So on that single battery runtime, you're gonna be able to get up to 1300 square feet of debris cleaned up per charge. And within that testing, you're able to clean up, we were able to clean up 170 pounds of debris within that runtime. So to talk about the uh, the dual battery product. So from a nine gallon perspective on an HT 12 uh, you know product on the max runtime mode, so you get a little bit more runtime here because of those efficiencies. So coming back to this, so 49 minutes of continuous cleaning time on these uh, on the nine gallon product, and up to 1,600 square feet of, of debris cleaned up, 190 pounds of debris uh, cleaned up per charge. And the last one is 12 gallon. So using that same dual battery motor head, so you're going to get the same runtime as here. The difference here is on square footage, and the reason why is. That particular product comes with the two and a half inch hose, the other ones come with the seven eighths. So you have a bit wider accessories, more room to essentially come into that tree, so you're able to get essentially more debris into there as well. Yeah, seven chains together. Yep. It's a good question. Yeah, so we mixed up essentially a mixture of drywall dust, drywall chunks, concrete dust. We also mixed in um, uh, wood shavings from like auger bits. So essentially it's kind of like a job site mixture, so to speak. Um, and then we were upright with wands going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So those are HEPA features. So we're gonna start out with a high efficiency filter. We are gonna have an option for a HEPA filter. We're also gonna have wet foam filters as well. So on the hands-on too, we have all the options for bags. So you can try those. And then we have uh, different filter options for coming out as well. So the last thing I wanna talk about um, is a lot of the key features, and I talked about ease of use in the beginning. Um, this tends to be a pretty frustration, frustrating experience. Tom had mentioned the designs really haven't changed for quite some time. So first and foremost is shape, right? So this design really hasn't changed for quite some time, but when we're talking with users and people in your audience, you know, you're living and dying in the van, in the truck. So having something that's flat top, being able to store things on top of it. Secondly is going to be hose storage. Um, so 
typically you have spots for accessory storage in the design, right? But there's really not a great, you know, where area to essentially put put the hose on the current design. So we kind of have a two part um, uh, solution to that problem. So we kind of have a C clip um, that essentially guides the hose and kind of clips it in. And you have kind of a dedicated universal bungee to kind of wrap it over into those spaces, giving you that final storage opportunity as well. Other thing I'll point out too is internal accessory storage. So on the six gallon product, you have a spot essentially for your crevice tool and then for your utility nozzle as well too. So again, it, uh, accessory storage obviously on the post there, we give the user to free up some more spots for the back accessory storage. So on the removal card, you have four dedicated spots from an accessory storage perspective, uh, giving the ability to fit the two and a half, the inch and a quarter accessories, the bit inch and seven eighths as well too. Whenever we kind of research a category, we typically either didn't find an accessory or found a box of accessories, and it was a bunch of different types of accessories. No one knew what fit with what, so to speak, right? Uh, so what we did is we straightforwardly added kind of color coding on all of these. So the gray indicates your inch and seven eight toes, and then your two and a half inch hose indicates red. So you can quickly point uh, and see what are on the job, what is on the job site, and what you're able to connect to. So giving the user the ability to do that. And the last thing I'll I'll say, and probably you know most importantly, is probably our our filters, um, our filter changing system. So if anyone's ever uh, cleaned out a wet dry vacuum before, you see it's a pretty cumbersome process. So if I got drywall dust sitting all over this, I'm setting it on top of there. I'm right here, I'm gonna pop this, and that pop is gonna go way out here. And it's gonna get on the ground, and you're gonna have to clean up again. So that tends to be a pretty frustrating experience uh, as we clean it out and even pop it back off, right? So for our system, it's a much cleaner execution from a filter changing perspective. So putting it on the side, one-handed operation, quarter turn, and click and go. So you're still turning it over, right? But the ability to clean it, be much more productive in that maintenance cycle uh, is something we heard a ton of. So um, from a durability perspective too, you're gonna notice plastic, no gaskets, etc. You're gonna see hard end caps on these, being able to actually bang these things and not deform the pleats and get them crumpled and everything. So there's a lot of key features really within all of these and that is gonna allow the user to have a much more pleasing experience and much more easy to use experience than what's been in the competition today. There's four tie down points here. We'll talk about this a little bit in the accessories section. But we're gonna have a dedicated bag that you can latch on top of this particular product, giving the user the ability to store the accessories if they have even more accessories than what's in the back there. Question. I can't help but notice there's no integration of the pack out system on this. Can you, can you talk about that? Yep, no, it's a good question. Something we acknowledged and we heard a ton from users, right? Um, so we understood, hey, users were, were requesting this. Um, fundamentally, when we kind of considered this, we didn't want to sacrifice all of the key things that essentially we have um, from a size perspective, from an accessory footprint perspective. So we definitely did consider it, but we didn't want to essentially sacrifice all the unique design characteristics that we built into these products. Now, I will say that you are going to see pack out compatible job site solutions from us in the near future. Um, but in this particular product, it does not have that integration. This is going to be an introduction to our air tip line of trade focused vacuum accessories. Uh, this line is going to be over 20 plus products that is going to fundamentally change how users interact and clean up on the job site at the end of the hose. So this entire program essentially is going to be uh, in addition to what you've already seen and really focus on the accessory front. Now, one thing that ties all of this together is compatibility. Um, so when we looked at this, we knew that these types of products needed to be uh, first. So for all of our air tip tra uh, trade focused vacuum accessories, compatibility was a very large portion that we needed to solve. We know that not everyone has Milwaukee vacuums. We have newer vacuums that are coming out. The competitive set that's out there today um, has been out there for quite some time. So in order to kind of unlock essentially versatility, we have um, the whole entire product line is compatible with other wet dry vacuum brands. At inch and a quarter, which is your standard, you have your inch and seven eighths, which is here. So it fits on friction fit there. And it fits on the two and a half inch hose as well. So it's not just Milwaukee vacuums, it's fitting other wet dry vacuum brands to really tie in the entire system. We give the users the versatility to really use these products, uh, even with some of their existing solutions if they're not uh, using Milwaukee solutions. All right, so I'm gonna give it over to Ben. I'm gonna swap out mics, and he's gonna get you kick-started. He's right, right behind you. All right, so as David mentioned, we really wanted to focus on the other end. So ignore our vacuums here. 
The first product I'm gonna show you is a air tip dust collector. So this has a rubber seal on the back. When we went out, went out and talked to people, electricians, carpenters, uh, anyone using a hole saw, a multi-tool, cutting outlet boxes, which is what we're gonna do here, it really took twice as long as it really needed to. So with this tool, we're able to suction right to the wall. Our users can cut, your viewers can cut up above this, and it'll capture all of that drywall dust so they don't have to go back and clean up the floor, clean up inside of the cabinet um, after they're done cutting. So uh, I really want to kind of show you guys what this looks like in action. I'm going to need a volunteer from someone who's comfortable operating a multi-tool. Typically what we'd see is maybe someone uses cardboard to try to catch this. There's uh, someone else working with them that's kind of standing there with a crevice tool underneath trying to catch everything. We're making this a one-man job, getting rid of kind of these makeshift kind of crude solutions. Uh, Vince is going to cut out without the air tip. I'm going to use the air tip on this side. It's just a rubber seal on the back. So the suction uh, from the vacuum is what holds it onto the wall. Um, and yeah, you can put that on, bump it around, hit it with the tool, it's not gonna come off. How well does it work on the concrete floor? Yep, it'll stick to all that too. Kind of a brick wall over there, we can go put it on that later. Um, any of those grout seams, anything like that. Another area where we really saw a lot of frustration was where can we get into places that a standard crevice tool can't go? Like I need to clean out into slivers, into cracks, small spaces um, that is even too big for a crevice tool. Really, this is all people have today at their disposal. Unless they make something, Frankenstein something together, tape a piece of hex to the end of a crevice tool, something like that. Um, so we satisfied those, those consumers with a flexible multi micro hose set. So there's five different pieces in this kit ranging from a quarter inch to five eighths inch uh, and from one to two feet in length as well. So I'm gonna show you a quick uh, demo here using a water heater. Imagine a service plumber or someone going to service a water heater, get some of that lime scale, the sediments out of there, uh, keep it up and running. Keep in mind, this is really just one of literally thousands of applications for this tool. Think automotive, um, other spaces like that, inside furnaces, uh, but really anywhere where this tool can't go, and you need a smaller, longer piece to get into, that's what this is gonna be for. Super easy to switch the tips as well. It's just a quarter turn. Um, you can go to any size you need, all in this little adapter. All right, and then the last one that we've got is our magnetic utility nozzle. So kind of another way to think about that standard utility nozzle that's out on uh, inside of every package. Uh, we've got one in ours as well. Um, but what we really heard from users, I know you were asking about bags earlier. When you get screws, nails, staples, stuff like that inside of those paper bags, if they aren't high quality, they're gonna rip and tear, and that renders that entire bag useless. Um, really gives a negative experience when you're going to empty out that vacuum, and it creates a mess inside of it when the whole point of the bag was to keep that clean. So um, what we did was add a magnetic strip on the front and the back of this product, so you can still clean up everything that you're intending to, while avoiding capturing all of those metal pieces. So those are the three I had to show you. Aaron's gonna show you three more. The M12 utility nozzle. It's powered by its own M12 battery, which then runs the roller brush bar. We also included a toolless bar brush removal for easier and quicker changing out and cleaning up those brushes. We've also featured a sliding airflow gauge that allows users to use this tool on multiple types of surfaces and longer carpet. So the whole point of this tool is to get a deeper, more agitated clean so that users aren't passing over multiple times through. One other fun feature we've included is an LED light so that users get the maximum amount of visibility in those low light situations. that took for him, whereas with the M12 utility nozzle, we got it in a pass. Through research, we found that when users were cleaning up on higher, you know, tall cabinets or wardrobes, they were often stopping what they were doing, had to go hunt down a ladder, 
or in a lot of cases, we're using the thing closest to them as a makeshift step stool, which we know has a lot of very obvious safety concerns. On the other end of the spectrum, when cleaning down low in those super tight, low profile situations, they were finding themselves on, the, on their hands and knees. And if they didn't have a crevice tool handy right then and there, they were trying to make the hose end fit and it often was way too big to get in those tight situations. The low profile pivoting brush solves all of these issues. It's an all-in-one solution that allows users to get multiple angles to get that perfect clean. Multiple pivot points feature and a swiveling head option to allow them to get the angle that they need to get up high and down low. They can now clean way up high without needing to hook down a ladder or stand on a, on a vacuum. They can also pivot it and that low profile design allows them to get down low and they won't be crawling around on their hands and knees anymore. This one takes a look at an accessory that you'll find all over job sites. Round brush tools are a fan favorite. Um, they agitate the carpet and debris. They are non-marring for those delicate surfaces that users sometimes find themselves working with. However, after watching users interact with tools like these, we notice that the brush design pushes debris away as users are using it, causing them to make multiple passes. So all of that results in a lot of wasted time. We took a step back and we looked at the physical brush design. So by integrating an X-shaped er, brush design, users still get the benefit of agitation and non-marring, but now with these openings here, they're able to fully engulf all of the debris in a single pass. Your single battery will be 249. Your nine gallon dual battery is gonna be 299. Your kitted version of nine down will be 699. That's two eight O's and a dual bay rapid. And then your 12 gallon will be kit only, two 12 O's dual bay rapid. So Milwaukee Tool might be upset when I say that my favorite thing about these three vacuum cleaners is the fact that they're modular. Modular in the fact that I might need the most suction from my vacuum cleaner, but I might not need the largest capacity. My favorite part is that I could put the most powerful head on the smallest canister, take it into a job where I might not need a huge capacity vacuum cleaner. I also like that I could have the smallest vacuum with their, with their best cart with storage. I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of great features. They're cordless. You have the option of AC. There's, there's all types of attachments. You could get a bag, you could get a filter. But my favorite part is the options. I just like having options. Video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're going to get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy and you're here in the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications through. What? You're not subscribed yet? Well, smash this button here. After that, watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later.